uh, Melody Festivalen. Now, you will notice there is a gap in the panel this week. Um, and this is because our very own Sean actually has been over in Malmo. <laughs> Let's see what it was like inside the arena last night. Hi, Sean. We're here at Malmo Arena, host city of Eurovision 2024. This is the arena, and we're here for Melody Festival and semi final one. Yay! Yay. Sad show from Elfest, especially to pieces of Lisa Ayak through to the grand final. I'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs> he spoilt us. He spoilt us. How are we supposed to cope under these conditions? Right. Do you know what, guys? Let's just go straight in. Then we already know who has qualified for Melfest, but let's look at the songs that sadly got thrown out and sadly um, have made it through to the fifth semi final. Let's take a look. Okay, guys, do these songs ever fail to disappoint? Paul and Andrew, let's come to you. What about the ones that got thrown on the reject, the proper reject heap? What are we thinking? I was a little upset for the the girl with the guitar. It was quite a sort of a retro song. It was quite a simple, pleasant song. I quite liked that. To Mia, without being derogatory, it wasn't. Uh, didn't have the fun that their previous entries had had which was sort of like the, the really sort of like wacky fun. And it to me, it just sort of like felt a bit flat. Yeah, I agree. That's, um, I just didn't really get that song. And you know, usually they're, when, they're, when they're funny, they do their uh, Schlager funny songs. They're, they're, they're pretty good. I'll probably listen to it again, though. I was a bit disappointed about Adam Woods. I thought it was a really, I, I mean, the vocals weren't brilliant. The song wasn't brilliant, but I actually really loved the staging. The LCD mm. display was brilliant. Uh, I have to say, Andrew was probably my surprise qualifier of the night. I hadn't quite got him down to qualify. Um, it's one of those. Sorry, it's on, one of those yeah. songs. I would say it's one of those songs. Supernatural. It seemed to start off really well, and then just didn't seem to go anywhere. Mm. I think if they almost gave it a bit more of an oomph with it, it could actually be a really strong song. Yeah, no, do you know what? I think you're absolutely right because I think the song itself had that really good kind of like opening and by the end of it, I was kind of like thinking, oh, is that where we're at kind of thing? I'm going to bring Alina in on this as well. Alina, when it comes to the two qualifiers, obviously we had um, Forever Yours um, mm -hmm. and Supernatural. Um, deserved qualifiers? Um, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, but I also liked like the non qualifiers. Like I think Adam Woods was like a very good song, great opener for Melody Festival. And, um, was not a fan of the fest or like it missed something in the middle. Also, I'm with Paul and Andrew. Like Samira and Victor, they were like the worst of their entries so far. And I listened to them like maybe once every two months, and the other ones were like fun and and lovely uh, my comment on samir and victor said and you you'll appreciate this lena i'm sure yeah uh, it was a poor man's bad and um yeah because I, I thought it was like a mix of every song they did in melody festival but then poorly <laughs> in my opinion it was not yeah. on the high train of samir and victor it was like they tried to recreate it listen this is the the final result and that's how I placed them. Absolutely. Oh, no. The other way around. I thought Melina Borglor 
was absolutely stunningly beautiful, a wonderful song and absolutely beautiful. Reminded me of the Portuguese song that came dead last when they hosted, so wouldn't have done well in Eurovision, but um, I liked it. And Samir and Victor, I thought they were great. They had a, a studied sort of casualness about it. it. Came over as a bit like pub karaoke, but in a good way, <laughs> if that's possible. Mm. Uh, I, no, I really enjoyed it. I can't bear the two that went through. So I'm sticking up for the ones that came last and second last. And the best thing of all was was the, was the Schlager that, uh, that opened the show. That was really good. Ah, yes. And to be fair, although I want to talk, talk about it a bit later, the 18s medley as well. Phil and oh, Michelle. Um, a song that came bottom was a, a lovely ballad. It was just someone there with a guitar and stuff. Do we think when it comes to Melfest, these ballads have to work extra hard to qualify because there never seems to be a lot of them that ever seem to make it past um, the first round. And certainly if they make the runoff, they never seem to get beyond that either. I don't think, I don't think ballads are Sweden's strong point. No. Do you reckon they're frightened to send a ballad after Anna Bergendahl failed to qualify? Yeah, they've, they've, they've had one failure and gone, oh, no, we can't go near that again. It's dreadful. Ah. Mm. But I think if you put the guitar down and sing from your heart, I mean, look at Johnny Logan. He didn't have a guitar and he did fantastically well. I'm um, just going to try and call Sean. One second. Hang on. Hang on. The screen might go black for a moment. Sean, 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 are you there? Hi, everyone. It's Sean in Malmö. And uh, I was here for the first semi-final of this year's Melody Festival. And so sorry I can't be with you tonight, but here are my thoughts on last night's show. But first of all, wow, they really know how to do it over here. It was just so spectacular, especially the uh, interval like with 18s. That was just an absolute moment. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, the songs, uh, well, let's, uh, let's start off with Adam Woods, Supernatural. And there were elements of euphoria in the background to this. It was a really good dancey, upbeat number. But me and Ian both thought there was really something missing and we couldn't quite put our finger on it. It just didn't feel finished. Don't know what it was, but it's just something that left us a little bit empty and really disappointed. The second it was Samir and Victor. Now, our seats were right next to the green room. And just before the show started, Samir from Samir and Victor sort of waved at me. Um, and I thought, why are you waving at me? I kind of looked across. I thought, why are you waving at me? I don't know you, or whatever. So I looked behind me thinking he might be waving at, at somebody else. Uh, and then looked back at him and he went, no, and pointed at me and waved. So I waved back. <laughs> um, really nice moment. But as far as the song is concerned, not as strong as the previous entries, I don't think, from Samir and Victor. Now, they've got a big following over here, uh, especially among the little kids. And there were, I saw dozens of kids that had homemade banners for Sammy and Victor waving them in the, in the arena. And I saw quite a few upset, crying little toddlers on the way out when they found out that they'd been eliminated. Such a shame. So Melina um, Borglo, uh, the lady in green, playing the guitar. I said to Ian, I said, oh, I wonder if they're doing some sort of green screen technology here with this one. And Ian said to me, well, that look a bit daft, wouldn't it? Just a head and hands playing a guitar. <laughs> it would be really funny. It might have made the song a bit more interesting, though, because it wasn't great. It, it was really nah, nothing about it, to be fair. Uh, didn't really go well down in the arena. There was no reaction from the crowd at all. And then, by comparison, song four, Elisa Lindstrom, Forever Yours. Wow. What an absolute anthem. What a massive pop schlager dance disco hit. This is going to be played for years and years to come, I think, in all those Eurovision and schlager party nights. It's going to be uh, fantastic. I really, really hope it gets through to the final. Uh, both uh, Elisa and Adam Woods uh, have, have qualified for the final qualification round, which is in four weeks' time. So there is still a chance that they could get to the grand final. Uh, those are my thoughts on the songs. Uh, that unfortunately didn't qualify direct to the final last night in Malmo. Uh, do you know what? I reckon he'll be back. He'll come back. He'll tell us what he thinks the qualifiers. Speaking of the qualifiers, though, guys, um, let's take a look at what actually made it through in Sweden last night. Direct to final. <laughs>
smash into pieces uh, with Heroes Calling. We had Lisa Ajax as well with Awful Liar. Since I'm an awful liar, I'm going to tell the truth and say, ah, I thought uh, the other Lisa should have got through. I would have loved to have seen uh, Lisa Lindstrom, forever yours, uh, to direct final. But you know what, Lisa Ajax, you still did a fab job and I still wouldn't have Melfest without you in it. I thought it was brilliant. However, smash into pieces. Oh, yes. Their song last year, absolutely epic. Six feet under. Absolutely loved it. This year did not fail to disappoint, although I would have liked a more kind of Blade Runner-esque background um, like we saw from them last year. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely amazing. I hope it goes really, 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 really big in the final because I would absolutely love to see Sweden send this at Eurovision. And I've just realised I've got a panel I'm supposed to be asking these questions to as well. So I tell you what, Alina, over to you. Yeah, uh, so on the Smash Into Pieces train, they came to Belgium like a few weeks ago. I didn't go and I still to this day hate it because I loved their song last year. But if I'm truly being honest, I think this, their, this song this year is like a little bit weaker than last year. And I just, I maybe I'm still on the other train but oh i was like a little bit disappointed um but i love the group and i love the music but i was like oh the other one was better um but yeah and then lisa ajax i have so many questions like when is her due date will she be able to go to eurovision because she's pregnant maybe she will like deliver just before i don't know and i also thought it was a weird song for um her singing being pregnant like you're such an awful liar and then you're standing there with a lovely baby bump and I was like what so um yeah that are my thoughts Paul and Andrew as well and um, what was your take on these with Alina I think um Smash Into Pieces was an excellent song last year it obviously lost out to Lorene this year their song was just really not as good it's okay middle of the road sort of pop rock yeah. i think the the two best songs got through mm. to the final but they were i don't think either of them are necessarily a, a winner to me smash it to pieces loved 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 their song last year and thought it should have gone rather than read which i know is heresy and the ballad you know with the, the lady bump to me that was just absolutely epic yeah, it was, a, it was a strong song. I was, I mean, I wasn't unhappy to see it get through. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I think I'm just too much on the smash into pieces train, to be honest. The fact they got an no, no, I, I understand. I, I, sorry, I, I don't get the gimmick behind smash into pieces that head. Well, I mean, the helmet he's wearing, why? It's just it's a weird gimmick. I, I just don't like it. It's a talking point, isn't it? Andy. Um, obviously, these were your bottom two when it came to your rankings, as uh, we found <laughs> out yeah. earlier. <coughs> um, so here is a calling. It's a, it, yeah, it's a pastiche. Um, somebody up here said, um, reminded them of um, the final countdown, and that that was that was what it reminded me of. But um, the ly lyrics were cliche. The rhymes were awful. Lisa. Oh, I don't want to talk about the song because it just didn't do anything for me. But just to say, even though Anna from ABBA um, was nine months pregnant when she sang Ring Ring, uh, it's not a good idea singing when you're pregnant. Um, it, it can damage the, the voice. So, um, and, and the more pregnant you are, the more danger there is to your, to your voice. So she possibly shouldn't be thinking of singing <coughs> Eurovision if, she, if, she, if she's going to be um, about to give birth. Phil and Michelle, obviously, you've got two very opposing genres there. What genre did you like the best? Well, one was good and one was bad. <laughs> but can you guess which is which? Well, I think you're more of a rock chick, so I'm going to go with the fact that you like Smash Into Pieces. Well, you'd be absolutely and utterly completely right. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> oh yeah, it was right up our straws, and that was this. This is what we expect from them. This is what we got, and I enjoyed it very, very, very much. It's good to see some rock in the final as well, isn't it? It's not just going to be 
the same stuff getting to the final of Melfest. It's going to be generic a, dancey woman, yeah, or, or a bit of slager. It's going to be a good mix, yeah. And Lisa AJ, oh god, I just thought it was a bit. It was a bit generic. It was a bit boring, and nothing really happened. It's like we've seen it a million times before. Sean, 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 you there? You there? Hello, welcome back to Malva. Now then, so Lisa Ajax and Smash Into Pieces both qualified direct to the grand final. In the first round of voting, Smash Into Pieces won the public vote and uh, Heroes Are Calling goes right to the final and I thought this was a really good, strong song. I've got to say, I don't think it's quite as strong as last year's, but nonetheless, still an absolute hit and the crowd were going wild for it. Um, I'm not sure if the staging was quite as good as last year, but they did use some of the um, sort of transparent LED screen technology because the drummer wasn't on stage for a lot of the song. And then on the moments that he was, it was he was elevated on a platform uh, behind the main screen. So we, we obviously realised at that point that the main screen or certainly the centre portion of it is the, the new transparent LED technology screens. Uh, it was a really smart, clever effect, I thought. Lisa Ajax, awful liar. She won the, the second section of the voting. It was a really good strong song. She's got an amazing voice, absolutely stunning voice. Again, I'm a fan of her earlier songs more than this one. But yeah, she got a massive reception from the crowd and a very, very strong song. And that'll be one to watch in the final as well. All in all, Melody Festival on, Heat One, an amazing experience. We love it here in Malmö. We'll definitely be back and back and back next year. Uh, and the year after that, and the year after that, probably, because I love it, I love it, I love it. Oh, cheers, Sean. We are back uh, next week. Also, next week, it's another absolutely bumper week. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Bye. Bye.